Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Park TV 16 Sports on location. And you have just seen the first pitch of the second half of a doubleheader between Bloomington. Well, I guess we don't have it on there, but I'm Robert Christensen, and we are bringing along your play-by-play -play of girls Metro West High School varsity basketball. Again, I'm Robert Christensen. We're broadcasting on location from Aquila Park in St. Louis Park. And right now, St. Louis Park, having just dropped the first of two games of this doubleheader against Bloomington Jefferson. They lost two to nothing in a pitcher's duel in a five inning affair. And now this is the second game of the doubleheader also scheduled for five innings rather than the normal seven due to the condensed schedule due to the extended winter and delayed spring we've had here in the Twin Cities. So at bat, for St. Louis Park is number 13, Maddie Cassio, the shortstop, leading off. And there are two strikes on her. Pitching for St. Louis Park is Peyton Hansen. She played first base in game one, had a nice hit there to help manufacture the two runs that beat the St. Louis Park Orioles. And her pitch on away is high. So looking at her stats, first of all, Cassio is batting 333, and she swings and pops it to right field, and it's foul, but in place. So Cassio remains alive. Both teams have similar records. In fact, right now, I think they're both six and four overall. Peyton Hansen, play, who's the pitcher for the Jaguars in game two, and that pitch, and that is also to the right side, and oh, out of play. Nice diving attempt there by the Jaguar right fielder. Just came up a little bit short. Coming in from right field was number 13, and I'm just trying to get some stats on her, including her name. Let me see, I think I have it right here, actually. Well, we'll work on getting that, but still, Maddie Cassio is still at bat, hanging alive there with two strikes on her. And that ball swung onto the right side, and nifty play there by the first baseman for Bloomington. That was number 25, Alyssa Felt. She was in center field last game. And now she is playing first base in game number two. And the first baseman in game number one for the Jaguars as she bakes her first pitch. And Sophie Ullman drives one into the gap between center and right and she's on second and she'll stand up there with a stand up double. So St. Louis Park off to a good start here following that loss 2-0 in game one to the Jaguars. Peyton Hansen on the year. She's played in two games. She's 1-0. She's pitched seven and a third innings. Most of the innings are going to Chloe Moore. She's got an ERA though of just 1.91. So now stepping in to the batter's box for St. Louis Park is number eight, Maddie Schmitz. And her ball right back to Hansen at the mound and she gets it over to first base to end the inning. So no runs on one hit, no score. And we will go now to the bottom of the first. And Bloomington Jefferson is the home team in game number two. And let's see what St. Louis Park brings out in the outfield, see if there's any changes. And I think there is only going to be one change. I did speak to the assistant coach for St. Louis Park in between games. And Faith Johnson, number four, will be in the lineup who wasn't in the lineup for game one. And let's see if we can see where she is located. Yep, Faith Johnson in left field. 
And Cassio taking warm ups there right in our camera view. Beautiful day here, by the way, in St. Louis Park, Aquila Park, as you can see from our camera above our truck here on the right side, just beyond first base in foul territory on the other side of the fence. And at first base is Savannah Romero. So that's the same. Maddie McIntosh is going to be at second. She fields a ball there. There's Romero in the near right corner down low. And pitching again is Annabelle Schutte. She's their star pitcher. She's had a couple tough losses of late. Lost to Benil. Uh, was up 1-0. And then just lost a tight one here to Bloomington. 2-0 just a few moments ago. And let's see who else. I don't see who's at third base for St. Louis Park. No one's out there taking that role. As of yet, in right field, though, is uh, number 56, Caitlin Seaman. In center field is number three, Megan Perkins. And yeah, Sophie Ullman, of course, she's the left fielder. She's hanging out there mound with uh, Annabelle Schutte. So, all right, looks like we're done with our warm up pitches. Teammates meeting there, little pep talk among each other. Just saw the outfielders do the same thing. So we're about ready to begin the bottom of the first and stepping into the batter's box for Bloomington and leading off game two is Lizzie Walker. Walker is a shortstop. She had a nice game in game one, key hit. Walker is batting 522, and she did have a big hit there to get that insurance run number two right at the end of the game. Otherwise, it was 0 0 through four, or through three and a half, I should say. Okay, pitch on away. Strike call by Shooty. Cheer there for Bloomington. They got individualized uh, cheers for their teammates. Very organized on the bench here. Bloomington Jefferson, our scores table, or our broadcast table is right next to their bench. Okay. Pitch hit on and scooped up by Maddie McIntosh over to Romero for an easy 4 3 put out. So that's the first out. Four, St. Louis Park. And now up to bat is number 11, Cassie Edlin. She had a stolen base in game one, scored the first run for Bloomington, and she takes strike one from Annabelle Schutte. So no balls, one strike, one out here. Bottom of the first, second game of the doubleheader from Aquila Park. I'm Robert Christensen, happy to be bringing you the play-by-play -play and color commentary today. Pitch on away, low in the dirt from Schutte. So one and one the count. Cassie Edlund. Shooty winds and sh a slow roller right back to Shooty and she gets it over to Romero to record the second out. One three. So a couple easy ground balls for St. Louis Park here in the bottom of the first and now with two outs. Taking her spot in the batter's box is J.C. DeFries. DeFries also had a good game at the plate. She's their number three hitter, batting 455, coming in to the double header this afternoon, and she hits that first pitch, and that goes foul. So strike one to Shooty. Strike call. So two strikes. Shooty quickly on top, two outs. Facing a very good hitter in J.C. DeVries. She played catcher in game one. Pitch on away, just inside. One ball, two strikes.
Schutte looks in, pitch on away, swung on, fouled back again. So hanging tough is DeVries, and she is a tough out, batting 455 on the year. Taking her time, getting the batter's box right. Okay, Shooty looks in, wind up, pitch on away, takes something off of it for strike three. Oh yeah, DeVries wanted that pitch, it fooled her. And that records the third out, and no hits, no runs, no score after one. 0-0 zero, zero here from Aquila Park in St. Louis Park, and the Orioles will now get their chance in the top of the second. They haven't scored any runs today. Getting blanked in game one, two nothing. Coming back out in the field, looks like the lineup in the outfield for the Jaguars will be the same. Peyton Hansen taking the mound there. Waiting for her catcher who made the last out. JC DeFreeze is their catcher, so sometimes they get out a substitute catcher to take the warmups until the catcher can get all her gear on. And Hansen uh, waves her off, so she doesn't want any warm-up pitches, which is it's a nice warm day anyway, and here comes DeFreeze. Always tough to make the last out and be the catcher and rush to get all that stuff on. But here she comes. Jefferson in there. Sally. Famous powder blue like uniforms. Golf. And yeah, Hansen's ready to go. And she will be facing, looks like Romero will lead off the top of the second. Savannah, the first baseman. Warm up strength. All right, here comes Romero. Trying to get something going here for the Park Orioles. So third baseman playing in very tight, way inside the base. So is the first baseman. I don't know if they're expecting a bunt here or what, but really playing in at the corners. And the first pitch in the dirt, ball one. Outfield playing fairly straight away for Savannah Romero. There's Peyton Hansen getting that ball ready. There's Romero. And the pitch on away, and that is going to be foul. Strike one. So one and one to Romero. Somewhat of a windy, blustery day. You can kind of see the dirt kick up when we get the gusts of wind, and then it dies down. So very swirling wind here, and that pitch is swung on, and that is to the gap, but I think the wind is gonna hold it up, and it does. Nice catch there in the right field. Alyssa, no, that is number nine. That's Lindsey Greasy, I believe. Yeah, nice catch by her. She robbed a St. Louis Park Oriole a base hit in game one nifty catch she made in the swirling wind. But that brings up Maddie McIntosh, and she swings on the first pitch, but it's in the hole, it's short, it's gonna be a tough play, and she beats it out. So, Maddie McIntosh, I don't know, I suppose I would score that a base hit. Just put it right where it needed to be. So St. Louis Park has their first base runner of game two, and that'll bring up the right fielder for St. Louis Park, number 56. Caitlin Seaman. Seaman on the year. He's batting 267 coming into the doubleheader today. With, so with only one out and a runner on, St. Louis Park has a chance to try to get something going after getting blanked in game one and scoreless in the first inning of game two. And taking a ball is number 56 Seaman. See if Maddie McIntosh gets the steal sign from coach Bobby Crumpson. Pitch on away low in the dirt once again and McIntosh, Jaguars are looking to see if there's gonna be a steal here. Hanson looks in, wind up pitch on away. Low and outside, ball call.
Taking her time, Hansen. Seaman getting the sign and pitch on away. Strike call. So two strikes to the right fielder, number 56, Seaman. Taking plenty of practice swings there as she steps into the box. Pitch on away, and that is swung on right to the second baseman. Oh, almost caught McIntosh, but she had quick reaction getting back. But a nice play there by Anna Martin at second base with the bang bang play and almost caught McIntosh lingering off first. Good move, boy, a lot of players would have gotten caught off first, but boy, they teach you in baseball and in softball and a line shot in the infield, your first step is back until you know it's through and McIntosh did a nice job not getting caught off first. But two outs now. Number four is up to bat for St. Louis Park. That's Faith Johnson. She rested game one. She's in left field and she takes the ball. Oh, they tried to get McIntosh, but she dives back safely. As we saw in game one, the Bloomington catcher's not afraid to throw that ball to first base. Number nine for Bloomington is J.C. DeFries. And that pitch just a little low. So that's a ball. St. Louis Park trying to get something going on offense here. In their half of the second top half, and yeah. Faith Johnson fouls it off to the right. All right, pitch on away. And uh, she blows it by her. Peyton Hansen gets the strikeout to end the threat in the top of the second. And we will go to the bottom of the second. No score, either team. St. Louis Park has two hits. Bloomington Jefferson, no hits. Just looking at the differences here in the lineups between game one and game two. Looks like it's about the same. Let's see, Anna Martin did play in game one. Peyton Hansen, Lindsey Greasy, Chloe Moore. So Chloe Moore is gonna take a rest in game two. And Natalie Pearson, number 23, playing first base in place of Peyton Hansen, who took over the pitcher's duty for Chloe Moore. And coming out into the field for St. Louis Park, Annabelle Schutte. There is no innings limit in girls softball as there is in guys baseball. And that just has to do with the arm motion. Throwing overhand and curve balls just has a lot of uh, unnatural torque on the arm. And throwing underhand, no matter how hard, really, you don't ever hear about any elbow problems or shoulder problems with the uh, girls playing fast pitch softball. So they have unlimited innings. So Annabelle Schutte is their pitcher. I think she's pitching every game. I don't know if they've had anybody else in there. Yeah, Savannah Romero has pitched 10 innings. Schutte's pitched 40 innings. And Emma Collins has pitched uh, a third of an inning. But the bulk obviously going to Annabelle Schutte as she looks in here. And she faces Martin, the second baseman for the Jaguars. And she swings on it. She was right on that pitch. Just got fouled straight back. So she'll look to get something going here in the bottom of the second inning. We only play in five innings, folks. So we're almost going to be a third of the way through this game here, and we're only in the second. All right, swung on, fouled straight back. So two strikes on Anna Martin. Martin coming into the double header. 16 games, she's got four runs scored and seven, or 16 at bats, seven hits. So she's batting 438. Not a lot of stats though with her shortened season. She just gets a piece of that pitch to stay alive. She lunged for it, but that's, she's protecting the plate as you like to do here when you got two strikes on you.
So Anna Martin looks in. Pitch on away and she strikes her out. Shooty, high fastball. Beats Martin for the first out. Strikeout recorded by Shooty. And now that brings up Peyton Hansen, first baseman and pitcher. She played first base in game one, pitching here in game two. Hansen's average coming in to the doubleheader, 318. Trying to get something going for herself. And that first pitch, a little low, but caught the knee. So strike one to Hansen. Yeah, a little less windy than in game one, ever so slightly. Still gusting a little bit, but the wind is coming down. We'll see if that has any impact, increased scoring and so forth. That pitch swung on, it was low, and she pulls it foul to the left side. So now two strikes to Hansen. Just getting the ball in here. Nice, beautiful, sunny day here in Minnesota. Arguably maybe the best day of the year. Just gorgeous out. Good day to be out watching high school softball. Here's the pitch on away high. So one ball, two strikes to Hansen. One out. Bottom of the second inning. Even though we're in St. Louis Park, it's a home game for Jefferson. If they try to get this season in in a shortened time span. Pitch on away and swung on. Fouled back by Hansen. She stays alive. One ball, two strikes. Making shooty work for it, that is for sure. All right, pitch on away. Low, two balls now, two strikes. All right, Shooty now. The 2-2 pitch, strike call. Hansen can't believe it, does not agree with it. I don't know if we can get a replay of that from behind the plate. We sometimes have a camera there that can pick that up, but boy, Hansen really did not like that, just the facial expression. But nevertheless, that's two outs. Umpire rules, they never change their mind. So two outs and stepping in is Lindsey Greasy, number 13, and Greasy on the season. We don't have any stats on Greasy for some reason. I don't know if it's that she hasn't played all year, because we usually have up-to-date stats on all this stuff, but uh, this might be her first at-bat game, and boy, she hits a line shot right to Maddie McIntosh, bobbles it ever so briefly, recovers and throws her out for a 4-3 third out. So that ends the bottom of the second. We'll go to the top of third. No score here from Aquila Park and St. Louis Park. As Bloomington Jefferson will take the field. Looks like Peyton Hansen will resume her duties on the mound. She comes out to take her warm-up pitches, although last inning she hardly took any. And St. Louis Park trying to get their first run of the night. And Hansen, let's see if she does any warm-up pitches here. You can see our beautiful truck there, Park TV 16 Sports. Look forward at all the events around St. Louis Park throughout the high school sports season. See them in the park for the concert series. Watch it on graduation day. And there's some information on how to get the programming, get DVDs for your archives for your children that are playing. <laughs> High quality equipment, they've invested a lot of money in this stuff. HD cameras, HD TV. All right, now stepping in, number three for St. Louis Park. And that first pitch fouled back. So Megan Perkins, the number nine hitter, leads off the top of the third. She's the center fielder, she'll be followed by Shooty and then or Cassio, then Shooty. And she takes strike one. So one and one is the count. And 
and she takes strike three. So strikeout for Hansen, and that brings up Annabelle Schutte, the number one hitter, leadoff hitter, and their star pitcher. Looking to get herself some runs. So coming into the second game of the doubleheader, St. Louis Park was six and four in coming into the first, and that ball is hit on, swung back foul. They were six and four. They lost game one, so they're now six and five overall. Or no, yeah, six and five overall. They were six and four in the conference. And Bloomington Jefferson came in four and three. They won game one, so they're five and three in the conference. All right, now Shooty, no sign, nobody on here, one out. Pitch on away, swung on and fouled off. She just barely caught up with that, but now it's two strikes to Shooty. Pitch on away, swung on, that's fair. Let's see, could be trouble in the hole. And it drops four. That's boy, I don't know. That was a tough play. Number 14. Lizzie Walker, the shortstop, couldn't quite catch up with it. Here's a replay. And she reaches and just comes out of her glove. And the center fielder came in, I think, scared her. Pretty sure made her flinch, so not sure what the communication was out there, but nevertheless, St. Louis Park has a base runner. And now that brings up the shortstop, Maddie Cassio. I don't know if that's a hit or an error. That's a tough one. It was such a tough, I, I don't know, that's a tough one. I'll check with the coaches in between the next inning, see if they have a, an opinion on that. All right, Cassio taking her time, kicking up some dirt. You can see how windy it is when you look at her feet there and she kicks that. Okay, there's a nice view right from behind the plate. Pitch on away inside. Cassio getting out of the way of that one. Cassio taking her time at her wrist as if checking the time. Not sure if there's some instructions on there or what. And no, Shooty did not go on that. All right, Hansen takes the rubber. Very deliberate here. Pitch on away, and the bunt attempt called a strike. So that's two strikes on Cassio. She looks down for the sign. From third base coach, head coach Bobby Crumpson. Hanson, look at the third base, and she hits it right to the shortstop. Walker gets it over to Martin, and she couldn't handle the low throw. So now we have runners on first and second with just one out. So a little miscue, two miscues in the field. And having thought about it, I, I, I think that would give that one a hit if I was scoring it. It was just such a tough play right in the middle. It'd be, I don't know who you'd give the air to, be a team air. So I, I think that was a hit there, producer Paul. Be my call on it. And that would be an air there. I think on the second baseman, I don't think the throw was so bad. So an air on that play, I'd give a hit to St. Louis Park on the previous at-bat. So now that brings up the third baseman, Sophie Ullman, with a chance to do some damage. And she fakes a bunt attempt, but pulls back. So lots of strategy going on now by both teams. The third baseman looking for the bunt, as is the first baseman. They're both playing way in at the corners. Pitch on away, high and outside, ball. All right. 
right, pitch on away, swung on to Martin, picks it up over to first base to get the put up, but it advances the runners to second and third, but that is the second out of the top of the third, and that will bring up number eight, Maddie Schmitz, and this is St. Louis Park's best scoring opportunity of the night in both games. The number, this is the second of a double header. So a real chance here for St. Louis Park to get on the board. Runs have been hard to come by this week for them. Hanson with the pitch, swung on and lifted to outfield, short right field and the put out made nicely there by Alyssa Felt coming in, playing it nicely to save the inning and the scoring threat. So we will go to the bottom of the third. No score. Bloomington Jefferson coach now having a meeting with their team, trying to get them motivated here. And St. Louis Park will come on the field and there are other ways to contact the city of St. Louis Park on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash backslash user backslash SLP cable. And there's what the screenshot will look like if you go there and check out all our broadcasts from winter, fall, spring sports. Park TV 16 Sports on location truck is all over St. Louis Park all year long. So coming out on the mound, looks like Shooty's gonna pitch again. And since the catcher was the last out, she's rushing to get her stuff on and she is now emerging from the dugout. And you can see just a beautiful day here. Just sunshine everywhere. All right, we're about to begin the bottom of the third inning. After the infield committee meeting by St. Louis Park, a few high fives there, or low fives there between Romero and Schutte. So no score here, another pitcher's duel here from Aquila Park in St. Louis Park. Pitch on away, call the strike. So strike one to Lizzie Walker, the shortstop. Or no, excuse me, that is not the short. This is Felt, Alyssa Felt will lead off the number nine hitter. She'll be followed by Walker and then Edlin and she follows off the second pitch so quickly in the hole, two, two strikes. Zero balls, two strikes. Pitch on away, swung on and right to Romero has no trouble picking that ball up and handling the out unassisted so Unassisted put out by Savannah Romero. And now we're at the top of the order. And swung on, let's see who's at bat there. It's number 21. Oh, excuse me, the last person up was Natalie Pearson. Now it's Haley. Reshawn, number 21. Let me see if I can get the stats on her to pass along. But meanwhile, oh, she hits it. Bobbled by Shooty. And they call her safe. I don't know if that was the right call. I think the ump, if I could read his lips, said he, she pulled her foot off the base, but I don't think she did. Let's see here. Here's the pitch. Shooty, even though she bobbled it, she was a little nonchalant. I would have got that ball. She tried to do it. And, oh, yeah, I think, she, I think the ball was not there in time. So I don't know, here, okay, let's have another replay here. Let's see if we can get, watch that foot. Yep, nope, good call by the ref, right on it. Her foot did leave the bag, so I don't know. You might want to score that in air on the pitcher. Had she not bobbled it, it would have been an out. So I think that's definitely got to be an E. So now that brings up Alyssa Felt. Sorry for the confusion there on the batters. So it's with seven, eight, and nine to lead off the bottom of the third. So Felt will take the batter's box with one out. On, 
And swung on to right field, and that's gonna burn the outfielders, and it's gonna be way out there. This could be real trouble for the Orioles. Here comes Feld around to third. She's gonna get the score in. And she hits a triple deep into right center field, scoring number 24. Haley Groshan for the first run of the game and a one nothing lead for Bloomington here. And they crack it open with a one nothing lead. And now they got a runner on third in scoring position and coming up is their number lead off hitter, Lizzie Walker. Wow, well, nice hit there. So Shooty giving up some big hits here. They use her a lot, boy. She might be getting tired, even though they don't have pitch limits. That doesn't mean you're still not getting tighter. So that was Haley Groshaw that came in around from first on the triple by Feltz. So now shooting a little bit of trouble. The whole infield playing in here with one out and the ball gets by the catcher and in comes Felt and she scores the second run. Another error by St. Louis Park, a pass ball. I don't think it was a wild pitch, but I'd have to see it again to give an opinion. But nevertheless, it is two to nothing Jaguars. So things are not going well here for the Orioles, unfortunately. Yep, there. Oh, I'd have to see it again. Meanwhile, Walker fouls back the first pitch for strike one. I'm looking directly in the sun when I'm trying to look at the monitor, so it's a little difficult to kind of see that replay, but I'm not sure what Maybe the producer, Paul, can make an opinion as to whether or not that was an error. Well, it's an error. It's a question of whether it's a wild pitcher. I think it was a pass ball, if I can, what it looked like. So, oh, slow roll to third base. That ball's still in fair play, but Walker will stay at first. So the slow roll to third, those are tough plays just because the base right there, Ullman had it, and just ball was low, but Walker had some speed there able to beat the throw, so I would call that one a base hit. And there's Shooty with the pitch. Looks like that was called a ball. And Cassie Edlin now, the left fielder. And number two hitter steps in. Walker on first. Two nothing, Jefferson. And Walker steals second. Our graphic on that screen is off. St. Louis Park has no runs. Jefferson has two runs. As Ed Edlund steps in. Walker on second in scoring position. Pitch is high and Walker steals third. She's got a lot of speed and she proved that on that dribbler to Ullman for an infield base hit by Walker. All right, now Edlin has a chance to go up 3-0 here. Pitch on away, inside. No, they called it a strike. Edlin backed out of the box as if it was inside, but the umpire called it a strike. There's Edlin stepping in. She's a good player for the Jaguars. Had a great first game in the first game of this doubleheader. Pitch on away, and that's swung on. Short left field, and there's gonna be a tag, and oh, it's misplayed by Faith Johnson, unfortunately, over her head, and that'll score Walker, and also on the misplay, Edlin gains second, and it's three to nothing on Lizzie Walker, beating out that hit, stealing second, stealing third, and then scoring on the miscue. I'd have to call that an error, unfortunately, on St. Louis Park. The ball should have been caught most situations, but it's tough with the wind and everything else out there. So now we're gonna have a big committee meeting, the whole team coming in. <laughs> See if they can stop the bleeding here in the bottom of the third where Bloomington has done some damage here, scoring three here in the bottom of the third. <laughs> Contributed to that were a couple of miscues by the outfield, or by the fielders for St. Louis Park. So, having said all that, in, steps in to bat the number three hitter, J.C. DeFries, and she is to be feared. She's batting 455, and she swings, and she drives that deep to right, but it's gonna be foul. 
but they are now starting to tee off on Shooty, and I just had a thought that one of the problems, well, in this doubleheader, which is really unusual, they never play doubleheaders except for our condensed season, but they have been looking at Shooty now for seven, eight innings now, and so, you know, after a while, you start to get used to their pitches and you can start to tee off on them, and that's what it looks like it's happening here. So you kind of want to mix up your pitchers if you can, just because it's a different look. And boy, she is all over that pitch. And now she follows it left and deep. JC DeVries. And she's got Edlin on second. She wants to get an RBI. DeVries came in batting 455 with a 773 slugging percentage. She wants to get a hit here. She's gotten hits in this position before, and that pitch just inside. So one ball, two strikes to JC DeVries. Outfield playing a little bit deeper after those last couple of hits. And the pitch on away, swung on and she just tips it foul way ahead on that pitch. She's a little anxious, just needs to wait on it just another second, but she is very anxious, she needs to wait on that pitch. Okay, Shooty looks in, trying to get out of this inning. Pitch on away, swung on, foul back. DeVries, tough out at 4.55. She's getting on almost 50% of the time. I don't care what league you play in, that is a great batting average. Beautiful sunshine splash day. Hopefully you're outside. And the pitch is high, so another ball. Judy looks in, winds up, pitch on away, swung on, and that's going to be fair. Short popper to Cassio, and she handles it cleanly to record. I believe that's the second out. We don't have a scoreboard here to help us with that. So a tough at bat by DeVries. Ends in an out. And now that brings up Martin, the second baseman. She had a little bit of a bobble there earlier in this game, so let's see if she can make up. But they do have three runs, so that's long forgotten. Won't have any impact on the outcome as one might have thought early on. So Anna Martin looking to the first base coach for a sign. Edlin there is at second base still. So base hit could score one, and boy, <laughs> Shooty brought the heat on that one, and Martin couldn't catch up with it for strike one. All right, now Shooty with, looks in the wind up. And ball called, and it's still windy. Coming out of the left field mainly, but a swirling wind here. Still spring-like weather as we're transitioning to summer in these parts. All right, Shooty taking her time. And the pitch, oh, she took something off that. and. Martin fell for the changeup. Nice pitch there by Shooty, the veteran senior pitcher. Took a little something off that pitch. So Martin now with two strikes and a runner in scoring position. Would love to get a base hit for a four nothing lead. Nothing hurts more than a base hit and a run with two outs. Let's see if she can come through or if Shooty can strike her out. And she strikes her out to end the side, but not before Bloomington Jefferson. Gains a 3-0 lead, and we will go to the top of the fourth. And there is the line, uh, and it looks accurate. Yeah, St. Louis Park, they've had a little difficulty. Three airs, Jefferson has one air, both teams with three hits, but Bloomington Jefferson hits have been timely, and those airs have really cost St. Louis Park. So let's see if they can answer right back here in their top of the fourth. We're only playing five innings in this game as we did in game one due to the condensed season. And let's see, yep, out coming to the mound for Bloomington is Peyton Hansen. And 
do up for St. Louis Park. Looks like it's going to be the shortstop, Maddie Cassio. And she does, she's not one to take a lot of warm up pitches. It's a nice day, she's ready to go. So the obligatory committee meeting in the infield. Outfield looks like they're ready to go straight away and Romero is ready to step in the box and we're in the top of the fourth. And it's been a while since St. Louis Park has gotten a run across, so let's see if they can change that. Cassio swings at the first pitch, so Hansen gets strike one on her, 0-1. All right, Cassio's ready to go. Here comes Hanson with the pitch. And that's swung on and fouled. Oh, hits the light pole. Nice job there, Cassio. So, but she's in a hole now. No balls, two strikes to Hanson. No outs here, top of the fourth. St. Louis Park just wanting to generate something here. Pitch on away, swung on and fouled. Short there on the left side. Two strikes, there's Hansen playing with that ball there. She now looks in, throws it, and swung on right back at her. Unassisted put out by Hansen, a comebacker right to the mound. Second time that's happened in this game, happened earlier in game one. There's the replay, pitch on away. Really didn't get all of it, but that is one out here in the top of the fourth. Nice play by Hansen, and now she'll face Maddie McIntosh. McIntosh swings on the first pitch and that gets by Hansen and just gets through the hole between second and short. You call that a seeing eye ground ball, just eludes all the players, but a nice base hit nevertheless for Maddie McIntosh. So she's on first and now that will bring up Caitlin Seaman, number 56, the right fielder. See if they get something going here with one out here, top of the fourth. St. Louis Park, desperate to get some runs across here. So let's see, and there's a ball in the dirt and gets by the catcher and McIntosh takes second on the pass ball. Bloomington with the three nothing lead. They're probably not gonna concern themselves so much with the runner, they just need to get outs. And that pitch, strike call at the knees. Lindsay, come in too. All right, here's the pitch by Hansen and swung on right to Martin. She gets it over to first and with an efficient put out, that records the second out but McIntosh advances to third on the fielder's choice. And now that will bring up the left fielder, Faith Johnson. Johnson on the year, comes in. Well, prior to her first at bat, she had had three at bats and three hits, so she's batting 1,000. So now she's batting, what, 750? With just four at bats though, not a lot of opportunities, but there's a runner on third, a chance to break into the scoring column here and that pitch strike. All right, here is the pitch to Faith Johnson from Hansen. And strike call looking to end the inning. No runs across despite the threat by Maddie McIntosh. And now we'll go to the bottom of the fourth of this five inning affair. Bloomington Jefferson up three nothing. They get out of the jam on that one despite an air and a base hit. So let's see what happens here. 
we go to the top of the fourth inning. And Annabelle Schutte back out on the mound. Looks like the same outfielders and same infielders. Coming out here. Kate Johnson, is she out there and left again? Looks like it. Yeah, here comes McIntosh, Ullman. Romero's at first, Cassio at short. There's the line on the game, no runs. Four hits for St. Louis Park, but three errors. Costly. Hey, I know, now I know why you're on the books. <laughs> Judy taking her warm up tosses. And she will be facing in the top of the fourth inning Lindsay Hansen, or Peyton Hansen, Lindsay Greasy, and Natalie Pearson. The five, six, and seven hitter. All right, a little conversation between the head coach and Peyton Hansen. She steps in, shooty ready to go on the mound. And the pitch on away. Low ball one. Peyton Hansen coming into the Double header, bat 318. She takes ball two now. Boy, Shooty has pitched a lot of innings. I wonder if she's getting just a little bit tired. Pitch on away, swung on. Fouled back to the right side. That is strike one. Pitch on away. Oh, just missed. So now two and two the count to Peyton Hansen. Hansen is a junior and she swings on it. It's out to center field and you can see that the wind had an effect on it, but it was hauled in nicely there by the center fielder, Megan Perkins. Nice job by her fighting that swirling wind up there. So that records the first out of the top of the fourth and now stepping in to bat is number 28, Lauren Angrimson. She played a limited, she has nine at bats, but four hits, so she's batting 444 with just 10 at bats. So nobody on here, top of the fourth. Bloomington up three nothing in this Metro West Conference rivalry. Both teams with similar records. St. Louis Park is six and five in the conference. Bloomington Jefferson is five and three in the conference. And pitch on away. Boy, that looked low, but they could call the strike. So strike one to Lauren. And that ball fouled back. So two strikes. To Lauren Anderson and, and Grimson. Never seen a last name like that. A-N-G-R-I-M-S-O-N, Ann Grimson. And she strikes out. So that's two outs now, top of the fourth. Nice job there by Shooty. And 
now stepping in to bat is Natalie Pearson. Pearson is a junior first baseman, number 23. On the year, she has seven at bats, two hits for a 286 batting average. So here with two outs, trying to get something going to add to the three nothing lead by the Jaguars. Shooty the pitch on away, inside, ball. Here's the pitch, swung foul. May have caught her in the batter's box. That doesn't look like she's suffering any pain. But she, her left ankle, she does have a guard on there, so I bet that's happened before. That can be very painful if it hits that ankle bone, especially on a cold day, but today's not that. Okay, she fouls that one back, so she's hanging tough. Natalie Pearson. She didn't appear in game one, but uh, hanging tough here at the plate here in game two. Pitch on away, and that is outside. Good eye there by Pearson. And the pitch, strong on, and that ball's hit well. And back to make an excellent play there, backing up in center field for St. Louis Park. Number three, Megan Perkins has a couple of nice putouts there in the top of the fourth. So they blank the Jaguars. No score in the top, no score, no runs across, I should say, in the top of the fourth. No hits. So a really good inning there for St. Louis Park. And they will now come to bat here in the bottom of the fourth. They're down to their last six outs. Down three nothing. And Peyton Hansen will come out to pitch the bottom of the fourth here. Broadcasting live from Aquila Park in St. Louis Park. I'm Robert Christensen bringing you the play-by-play. -play. Paul Broden is our producer. And we have great camera angles, three cameras here today. No, four cameras actually. We got a camera behind the backstop, a camera over by third base, and then a camera high up along first base, and even a backup camera. So high quality broadcasting here. Park TV 16 Sports, glad to be here with you, bringing you great Metro West girls varsity softball. Just looking over at the umpire, the St. Louis Park coach coming over to have a word with the ump. Looks like there's gonna be a substitution. As soon as we get that information, we'll pass it along to you. Coming up here in the bottom of the fourth. Leading off batting for St. Louis Park is number 32 who may be making her first appearance of the year. No, it's Maggie Klein. Maggie Klein has five at-bats, no hits on the year, so that must be the substitution. So, Coach Body Crumpston is trying to get it going here by a substitution, not a bad strategy, just trying to get a spark. So she's a left-handed hitter looking for a first hit on the season, only four at-bats. And she'll be followed by the leadoff hitter, Annabelle Schutte. So St. Louis Park trying to get something going here. Pinch hitter, Maggie Klein. Let's see what she can do. And the pitch from Hansen, and that is over the head of everybody. So ball one. Wind looks like it's dying down now finally as the sun is still high in the sky but getting a little bit lower. Sun doesn't set till 8.22 this evening. So the days are really getting long and they're gonna start getting shorter in about a month and a half already. All right, Peyton Hansen now against the relatively inexperienced Maggie Klein. And the pitch to the lefty is called ball. 
So two balls, one strike to Maggie Klein. Hanson looking out to her outfield. Smiling there a bit, a little inside joke maybe. And the pitch on away, swung on. Strike two now, two and two. No outs here, bottom of the fourth. We're only playing five innings. I keep bringing that up because it's very unusual, but we have a condensed season due to the wintry weather through most of April. And the pitch, swung on, strikeout, Hansen. One out, bottom of the fourth. So St. Louis Park is down to their last five outs, down three, but now they got the top of the order. So this is their chance. Their best players coming up to bat, and this is Annabelle Schutte, their star pitcher, going to St. Kate's to play softball next year. And the pitch by Natalie, Han or by Peyton Hansen in the dirt. So ball one to Annabelle Schutte. Pitch on away, swung on, and a slow roller to Martin, the second baseman, who picks it up cleanly. Gets it over to first base for the second out. We got two. And now St. Louis Park is down to their last four outs, so nobody on. Two outs here, bottom of the fourth. And coming up to bat. Come on, dog. Hey, Natalie, this one you caught. Anna came your way, so coming this side. Is number 13, Maddie Cassio, the dancing shortstop for St. Louis Park, and she swings at that first pitch. Looked like it was well out of the strike zone. She swung at it anyway. So strike one to Cassio. Whenever I say that name, I can't help but think of the old calculators. Cassio calculators, I'm not even sure if they make them anymore. Cassio watches, and swung on and hit sharply by Martin, second baseman, and the right fielder had a notion to throw her out at first. It was, it was hit so sharply that they almost had the put out there at first. Hey, but right boy, idea. ball Good well job. hit there by Cassio. So let's see if that's a spark here for St. Louis hey, Park right with two middle. outs. And now their the next hitter, the number three hitter is Sophie Ullman. It's been relatively quiet tonight at the plate in this double header with Bloomington Jefferson. And she follows that first pitch back. Sophie Ullman is batting 360 on the year, 25 at bats, nine hits. Five singles, four doubles. Let's go, Payne. Come on, kid. But strike one, two outs, runner on first. You all right, you all right. Pitch on away, and that is in the dirt. So it seems to me that Peyton Hansen having a little more difficulty as the game goes on finding the strike zone. St. Louis Park would be well advised to just be a little more patient. Cassio on first, trying to get around just to get something going here. Hansen pitch on away, swung on, and it's gonna be tough play, but Martin makes a beautiful play over the shoulder catch. Those are tough plays to record the third out. <laughs> and that concludes our ball game. And I thought we were in the fourth inning. I swear to God we were in the fourth. But I guess we were in the fifth. And that con Okay, yeah. So the confusion is because we are in St. Louis Park. But St. Louis Park was the visiting team. So, But nevertheless, the score is the same. The play was the same. And unfortunately for our St. Louis Park fans, they dropped two in the doubleheader against the Metro West Bloomington Jefferson Jaguars. So their record, they fall to six and six. Bloomington Jefferson improves to seven and two. And that will conclude our broadcast. So for Paul Broden, our producer, and everyone connected with our broadcast at Park TV 16 Sports, I'm Robert Christensen. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you again. Thank <laughs> you.